Hello, I'm Leah, and this is my weekly podcast, Bare T-Shirts with Leah. Uh, as the name might suggest, each week we have a conversation, admittedly one-sided, about a T-shirt from my band T-shirt collection. I live in Adelaide, and I record on Ghana land. Now, this T-shirt is actually revisiting a band we have already spoken about before, and I did kind of tease that we would come back to them, and we are. It's Tool. There we go. God, that's the second time I've tried to do a dramatic reveal and not really done it very well. Anyway, here it is. It's a black t-shirt, uh, short-sleeved as well. I know. <laughs> Who would have thought it was a short-sleeved black t-shirt? But uh, this one on the front, uh, if you remember from the other t-shirt, it had tool written in quite large across the chest. This one is um, just quite small in uh, gold writing. And then there's um, a little pattern underneath it, like with an eye pretty cool but it is pretty small I'd say it's like oh maybe four inches and then uh, this one is another t-shirt where most of the detail is on the back so this is um, the back <laughs> it just dropped it oh I can't really see if I'm sure oh there you go so um, it's pretty big the pattern on the back it's like a man with many arms kind of reflected back and with like a kind of galaxy pattern coming out from it um, and it is from the 2022 oh my gosh it is from the 2020 tour um, and there you can see the dates in there it was in February 2020 that's right it was early in the year when we were still allowed to do things and people were still allowed to come to Australia so I went to um, this night here, the 22nd of February in Melbourne. Again, this was another concert I had to travel for because um, they didn't come to Adelaide, which is not unusual. Adelaide gets um, left off a lot of things. So they went um, Perth one night, Sydney two nights, Brisbane one night, two nights in Melbourne, and then two nights in Auckland in New Zealand. So again, this was a um, Australia and New Zealand tour. And then, yeah, it's quite, like, the colour on the back is quite nice, I think. It, um, it's, it's kind of like a lot of their, um, I think earlier artwork as well, which is kind of like the layers of body, you know? That's not really. There's one that your CD cover where you kind of, you open it up, and as you open it up, it takes off, like, the nerves, the muscle, the, anyway, it's that type of colouring, right? Like, red, blue, white, there's lots of eyes. Anyway, and um, on the side it says, um, oh, that wasn't a good way to show that. <laughs> it says, Tool, Los Angeles, California. God, why can't you do things later? There you go. Maybe I can do things. And that's in white writing. That's only on one side. There's nothing on the other side, I don't think. That's on the right side. Anyway, so here it is. I'm going to put this up again back there because, again, most of the detail of this t-shirt is on the back. All right, so there is uh, a little story time that leads me into when I get to see in 2020. So Fear Inoculum comes out in 2019 and uh, my mate from work, Jimmy, says to me, oh, have you heard the new album yet? I'm like, no, I haven't picked it up yet. He's like, oh, yeah, well, anyway, it's out. You should start listening to it. So I do. I kind of stream it, but only half-heartedly because I feel like streaming a tour album is not really, that's not really the experience that I want, right? So go, nah, this isn't working. I need the physical album. So I go, I go to JB Hi-Fi, go for a walk at lunchtime, go to JB Hi-Fi, I'm going to pick up that album. Anyway, go to pick up that album. I can't find it. I can't find it in new releases. I can't find it uh, in the tool section. I check, you know, like how, um, you know, how they separate them into different genres. I check any genre thinking maybe, maybe I've misgenred them and they're somewhere else. Anyway, I can't find it. And so I go to the front desk and I say, where can I find the new tool album? Because uh, it's not on the shelf. And um, the guy there tells me, oh, I can't. I can't get it. That there was a very limited release of the physical album. And um, you had to pretty much pre-order it. It was a very small amount. If I didn't do that months ago, I wasn't getting a copy. And I was like, but what do you mean? 
I can't get a copy. You know when you hear something but because it just doesn't make sense to you, you just are like, huh? And I go to him, see, when, when can I get it? And he's like, oh no, you can't get it at all. That was it. It was like a, a limited release. That's all they're doing. It was a special album cover. Like they're not doing any more um, physical <laughs> releases of the album. And I was like, oh, oh, um, okay then. Anyway, and I go to leave. He does tell me to have a nice t-shirt on because again, this day I'm also wearing my Rage Against the Machine t-shirt, which we've seen before, the one that's hanging on by a thread. In 2019, it wasn't as bad as it is now, but it was still, it was still had seen much better days. Anyway, so I leave and I think, well, what am I supposed to do now, right? Because I'm not really enjoying listening to it, um, just streaming it. That's not, for me, that's not really how I like to listen to a Tool album. And I know now I sound like the people that I talked about last time who complained about things that Tool do and was like, hey, if you don't like it, take a hike. But um, that's because I am exactly like that. You know, look, sometimes people are, you know, hypocritical. I might be one of them. But I just, I feel like I can't really listen to it. For me, I feel like a new Tool album is an immersive experience. There's such great cover art that's linked into it. I like to read um, the lyrics. I like to see anything they've written. And I like to look at the art because I feel like they put a lot of effort into it, right? I feel like the design, the crafting, the product as a whole is an immersive experience. And so I tell my mate, Jimmy, I'm not listening to it anymore. And he's like, what do you mean? And he starts telling me what are the great tracks and everything. I'm like, nah, I'm not doing it. All right. If they're not going to give me an album, I'm not listening to it because for me, a new tool album is an immersive experience and I'm not getting it. So I'm not listening to it. And that's that. Right. And he, he tries to convince me because he's like, but it's a really good album. You're going to really like it. And I was like, but I don't want to. So I'm not going to, right? Anyway, so I don't. That's right. I am exactly like those other people that I complained about before because I felt like it wasn't getting the full experience. But you got to remember like 10,000 days. I wish I had like my CDs are packed away at the moment. I can't get them out. But 10,000 days had this flip on it where you like the album, sorry, the actual physical album that you bought, right? You had a flip on it and it had like these goggles on it, like lenses, and then you opened it up and then it made them a picture and it looked like a 3D image. And it looked different when you looked through the go through the goggles versus when you looked at it flat. Right? And I was like, excellent. Thing we're just talking about like in Ladder Ice, I'm pretty sure it's Ladder Ice where it caused like the um the unlayering of the body, right? Like I just want I just want a full experience. Also, this is slightly off track, but um, I love physical CDs. I love albums. I like when you first get an album, um, listen to it. Usually I listen to it in two ways, right? I either put it on in the CD in the car, the CD in the car, or now I stream it in the car, and I just listen to it end to end. And in that way, I know, I know what no songs are called because they're just called the third song, the one after that one, the one at the end, <laughs> you know, the really short one. That's it, right? Because I'm listening in the car and I'm just getting a full experience of the whole album back to back. Or what I used to do, and I do a lot less now, obviously, because buying CDs is a lot less common, is I get the album, I put it on, uh, and I open the book. It comes with it, right? I see what's in it. What are we talking about? Are there lyrics in here? Is there pictures? Is there art? What, what, what have we got? What's this whole concept album that we've been delivered? I really miss that. I also really miss going into um, music shops where they did that. It's funny, my mum and I were talking about this um, just the other day that now sometimes when you go into a place like you ask for something. Like that day, that, that, that guy in there was great, right? He knew exactly what I was talking about, what I needed, and he was able to give me exactly the answer I didn't want, but the correct answer. And, um, you know, and that was great. But often you might go in there and you might ask a question 
at any shop where they sell CDs and they don't know anything, right? Because they're not specialist music shops. What they do is they just look it up. What are you looking for? And they try to find it like that. And they're not judging them because when you work in a shop then it has, you know, it doesn't do music as a product. It does entertainment as one product and there's like everything in that but then it has all other areas of retail in it as well like maybe house goods or computers or I don't know like you know what I mean they're just they're not specialist music shops anymore and so finding them is a little bit harder they're a lot smaller and I find their hours are less frequent so they might be open three or four days a week I don't know. I mean, you know what? Maybe I should do a real proper look for more music shops. But uh, back in the day, my music shop of choice was Muses. I went to there all the time. I had a guy there. He was called Phil. And Phil helped me with everything. And it was funny because I hadn't thought about Phil in ages till I had this conversation with my mum. Because I'd say to him, hey, I'm looking for blah, blah. Can you help me? And again, this was like in the olden days where you didn't just buy everything online. Or you didn't just stream things like you went to someone and they bought it online for you right anyway so the muses that was my music shop of choice and I bought many many things from there and I spent many hours in that shop over the years looking at different things that I wanted anyway having this experience of CD buying and now actually I'm thinking I will you're going to have to return to actual CD buying, I think, because it's such a good, for me, it's such a good experience. If the artist has made a CD that they want you to buy a physical copy of, you know what I mean? If it's just, if it's just a CD and it's got one, like a one or two pager in it, I'm not going to buy something like that. But if they've put the effort in, if they've done the artwork, they've done the concept, I should buy more because I do like that feeling of opening them up and having a look. Anyway, back on track specifically, I like to do that with tour albums because the artwork is so detailed and really feels really specific to tool. So anyway, I can't do this. Um, and I don't listen to the album again. <laughs> so that's, that's where that stops me listening to the album. I don't. I am a little bit, I mean, even though I'm not listening to it on principle, <laughs> a part of me, of course, wants to listen to it because I know I'm going to enjoy it. I know because it's been like 13 years between albums when I'm hearing new tool music, I'm going to be like, excellent. Because I feel like it's going to be considered. I feel like there's going to be effort. I don't feel like I'm just getting had a thought, recorded a thought release the thought here's a new album ka-ching repeat 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 their process is their process and however long it takes it's however long it takes and that part I'm fully on board with even though of course I would like more I'm fully on board with the process but <laughs> knowing that the process included this album which was 150 bucks by the way I don't think I said that yeah it was it was like a deluxe album release right it was 150 dollars so they had obviously put a lot of thought into what this album would look like too. Not just what it sounded like, but what it looked like and what it felt like. And so that, again, made me be like even more like, I want it, right? Anyway, so fast forward a short amount of time. I don't really know how long. And I'm at the bar with um, some of my friends from work, including young Jimmy. And we are, if you live in Adelaide, we were at the London Tavern. So that should give you an indication of how that night went. Um, and I get a call from my brother, my older brother, and he tells me, Tool have released the album. You can order it now online. You can get it online. And I go, like, for real? The whole album? Yeah, they have. They've released two versions of it. The $150 version, the deluxe one, and another version that I think is like, maybe 70 to 80 I don't know. Uh, but she's doesn't have all of the features of the other album. Now, um... Look, I'm probably a few beers in by this point. I'm like, excellent. I'm buying this album. I'm buying it right now. So I do. I order the album right then to pick it up as soon as it's released. Now, luckily, I actually have this album out. Even though most of my CDs are packed up, this one is not. 
and here it is. Can't remember. <laughs> Gosh, I am really bad at reveals because this is actually the back. Although to be fair, it's not. <laughs> it's not that different on the front. Although I think this actually fits fits in a sleeve, and I don't. I don't know what I've done with that. Even though I've complained about how I love all the things. Anyway, don't worry about that. Here it is. Then this is right. You open it up, you go, oh yeah, that just seems like normal, normal album. But wait. Anyway, yeah. There's a little screen in here. Right, and you can skip through different parts of it and there's there's a, that's where the volume is coming out of here I don't know if you can see that was like little holes for a little speaker in here is uh, a little cord so you can recharge it USB cord and oh goodness and then this side I think is the actual CD oh. there and you know what, don't try to jam that in there and wreck it. And then this side is the um, the cover art, the booklet. You know, I'm going to close that because I'm just... I'm going to bend something the wrong way, trying to be like, trying to keep it visual. And I'm going to bend it and break it. Anyway, this is the, uh, the booklet, right? So this has in it... Okay, <laughs> oh, I've opened it up back to front again. Anyway, so here it starts with that same mirroring of the artwork and then the lyrics from Fear Inoculum and then it continues on. Numa, oh, look at that. This is quite topical because I don't know if you know this, but um, it's Olympics time right now. The Olympics just opened, I think, on the 26th and... Um, you might have seen Snoop Dogg carrying the torch a little bit. Anyway, so this is the actual album um, with the cover. So this one is like it's kind of like a tissue paper. You can just see Danny's face. And then here he is. Anyway, so I was very happy. I got that album. And then I listened to that album. And my mate Jimmy and my brother Daniel were all correct. It is an amazing album. And of course I love it. When I was putting the um, CD part away, I did just see as well, there was like a voucher in there to get an MP3 download. <laughs> and I know if that's still valid since I got this in 2019, but it doesn't matter because if I needed an MP3 version of this, I would just burn this album, which I have legally paid for and would not be commercially using for anyone else, just me. Anyway, so I listened to the album. It's great. I love it. Tool announced that they're touring. Uh, my mate Jimmy and I are very excited. Our other workmate uh, Boo, she is also very excited. We're like, excellent. We should go to see Tool. We should have a group, a work group um, road trip to Melbourne to see Tool. One of our other friends, she's not going to come to Tool, but she's hoping that she can just come on the road trip as well. And another one of our colleagues is like, excellent. I've got to catch up with a friend in Melbourne. I'll come too. So our work group of about nine people, like the five of us were like, let's all go to Melbourne. This would be great. So um, I actually have to go to a workshop on the day that the tickets are on sale. So I can't buy a ticket. Jimmy buys our ticket. He gets us uh, GA tickets for the Friday night show in um melbourne and then um I, I we like convince andrew as well that she obviously should definitely come with us if she tries to get a ticket ga is sold out she gets a seated ticket but this is fine because by the time the show rolls around in february we will have figured out what our plan is for the weekend and we'll you know obviously we'll go to melbourne and we're going to go see tool we decided to drive over then on the Friday morning that Boo and myself and one of our other workmates, one of them can't come because she has to stay at work and do work because, you know, half the team is going to Melbourne. Um, and our other mate, Jimmy, he flies over and he's going to meet us there. So 
we go, we all meet at Rod Laver, um, which at this stage is still, I've only ever been to concerts at Rod Laver. I've never ever seen a, um, at that point, I'd never seen a sporting event there. I have now, I went to my first one last year, but I'd never seen a sporting event there. But anyway, so we go in, we're trying to get into the GA part. Um, there is a really long line. It is moving incredibly slow. The show has started. We can hear Fear Inoculum outside. Like we're not, we're not outside of the venue. We're outside of the doors to go into like the arena part of it. We're in the, uh, I guess the outer part of it. We can't get in. Um, we, the lines kind of get moved around. Jimmy and I separate. Um, we go and we we don't see each other again until the end of the show. That's it then. Like. I'm never going to find him again, right? It's like an average height dude with brown hair at a tall concert. Good luck. Um, so I go in. I do actually get into the arena then during Anima. And, um, oh, man, it is really <laughs> dark in there. Can't really see where I'm going. They're like, you just need to go down there because the GA part is where the tennis court is. So um, I need to go, you know, through the like the regular stand and then you go down anyway that is quite difficult because obviously the show has already started it's really dark there's a lot going on I'm worried actually I'm going to fall down break my neck but it's fine I make it downstairs and I'm all good so I get down and the stage is um enormous it feels enormous actually I don't really have um a lot of photos or footage from the show itself because um they ask you not to not to take photos not to record it just to be present and enjoy it and quite frankly i'm happy to do that because i am enjoying it so i um am <laughs> in, i don't know i think i'm about maybe two-thirds of the way back but i'm looking up and the stage just looks so big and to me it feels a bit like um a fish tank it feels like there's this kind of like light netting or something that's coming from the roof all the way down and then um, again they're set like well now I'm trying to figure out who was sitting who was on what side so I if I'm looking at the stage obviously I'm looking at the stage what a great way to set the scene but I don't know now whether Justin or Adam which side they were on but they were on the side Danny is in the middle but pretty far forward especially for a drama pretty far forward and then Maynard is like at the on the kind of on the left towards the back I'm pretty sure it's the left but he's not out the front again he's not out the front he's on the back and you can still kind of you can see him moving around a little bit but um yeah you can't he's not Again, we've talked about this in the other one. He's not the front man in the front. Um, which is fine, right, anyway, because, like, the, the the sound is all of them all combined, right? It's not just one. It's the sum of the parts, right? So the fact that they can all be spotlighted is pretty good. Um, anyway, it is a phenomenal show. The sound is... Um, I don't, it does, it felt like just like a wall, but in the best way. Like, you know, when you just, like everything felt balanced and everything felt like it was coming in. So, I don't know, everything just felt like it exactly how it should. And I actually, you know, I spoke to another friend um, just online, just messaging afterwards. And he was like, oh, did you go? And I'm like, yeah, I did. And he's like, yeah, I noticed a couple of mistakes in a couple of parts. And I was like... I didn't notice shit, right? Because I don't. Uh, well, I mean, look, unless something is really like, Urgh, I don't notice it because I'm just enjoying it. I'm just in it. That's the beauty of live music, that it's not exactly always how it sounds on the album. And that's great. Um, when it does sound exactly like it's on the album, that's also great. Look, I'm just really, I just really love live music. So however it comes out, uh, as long as it's good, I'm pretty happy. Anyway, so I was pretty happy because it was very good. And it was very loud. And it was really 
it it was a great show it was really so it was so good now because this is the fear inoculum tour obviously we can do a reasonable number of songs off that album so they do fear inoculum obviously as i said that's what they open with um descending invincible numa um the chocolate chip trip which is what which is what they did directly after um you know the before the intermission well, they could i think it got called an intermission but you know like before they come out for the encore right um but they also did stuff off of other albums as well like schism stink fist uh 46 and 2 like it was a real it was also a real mix it wasn't just the new album but it was anyway it was a great set because i just felt like every song was like oh yes oh yes you know when you know when that happens and you're like there's not a there's not a dud spot here this is so good anyway that's how it felt now like i said i went on the friday night and um there was going to be another show on the saturday night and i was like i would I would like some more of this, please. So we tried to see if we could get tickets for the Saturday night, but there was some available, but not any. I don't think there was any where the two seats were together. So our mate Jimmy couldn't go, but Boo and I, we were still there for Saturday night. We weren't going home until um, the Monday, I think. Yeah, we still had, we said, oh yeah, it was definitely the Monday. We had a few days of stuff to do in Melbourne. So we were like, if we can go on the Saturday night, we're still fine because we don't have to drive home till Monday. Anyway, so we couldn't get tickets to that. They announced uh, more dates in the US not long after that. Now, at this time, there was a little bit of chatter around um, a virus, which we all know what that is now. But at the time, I wondered if it was just like bird flu, SARS, you know, where they were like, oh, we need to be careful about this. And there was a little bit of an impact, but not really a big impact. Um, and so... Andrew and I decided to go to California in June if we could get tickets, which I did. I had to wake up at like two o'clock in the morning, got online. <laughs> I was in bed. I just had everything ready next to my bed so that I could just get go uh, like in the middle of the night, bought tickets. Now, I did. So we were going to get tickets in. We we're going to get tickets in San Francisco at the Chase Center, which was only pretty new at the time as well. So it was exciting. We'd get to see what the Chase Center looked like. Plus, we were going to be in San Fran, going to be able to go to, you know, look at a few different things. Now, the interesting thing actually about this show was that there wasn't a GA, that the floor was also seated. They're like, oh, you know what, fine, we'll take it. Okay, we'll take whatever we can get, we just want to go. And then um, I say to her, you know what, I'm going to see if there's another show in California that I can get a ticket to, because I'm going to go to that as well. Because if I've gone all the way, if I've gone all the way from little old, La little old Adelaide to San Francisco and I can go to another show that's only maybe a couple of hours away, well, I'm definitely going to go to that, right? Anyway, so I do. Again, <laughs> 3 o'clock in the morning, I'm like, Ooh. get tickets to um, Sacramento, tickets to the... Uh, and then I think it was, I'm just looking here, I actually wrote it down. It was the day before, so... If I went to Sacramento and then during the day travelled to San Francisco, then I would be able to go to both shows. I looked at it, I was like, yeah, this seems reasonable, this seems doable. Anyway, again, there's no, like, set GA. It's seating on the floor, which I find so strange. I don't know if that's normal. Is it normal? Like, is that normal at American shows? I don't know. I've never been to an American show. If you've been to an American show, let me know. If you saw Tool in America, let me know. I don't know. Anyway, but I just thought this is so good because, um, as you know, when we're talking about Chris Cornell, um, after he'd passed away, we were kind of thinking, you know, like, we saw him on the solo tour that he did and it was so amazing. Um, and obviously saw him in Soundgarden and just thought, though, right, if we knew that was the last time we'd see him. We would have probably followed him around the country, right? You would have just gone, tried to see him as much as you could. And I was thinking the same thing about this. Or he'd not, not be morbid. No, I'm not thinking that they're going to die. Not like that. But um, Danny was talking about how there is um, a level of physicality involved in the drumming that Tool fans expect when they go to a show. It's what they expect when you do an album. So, um, 
he needs to be in a tip in a certain physical condition to be able to perform at the level that people expect him to perform at. So, um, he doesn't know, obviously, then how long he'll be able to do that for as he gets a little bit older, right? Now, again, this isn't me saying they're too old to tour, okay? And this, this is their, well, his statement about physical requirements of touring. So I think, you know what, of course, if I can get to, if I can go to two shows, I'm going to two shows. Well, anyway, I think you know what happened here, right? Obviously, I didn't go to two shows in America because the thing that we thought was maybe a minor thing was not a minor thing and um, we could not leave the country. And look, those shows ended up getting, they got postponed at first um, and then they ended up getting cancelled. So, um, yeah, I did not get to see Tool again and I have not seen Tool again even though obviously I would very very much like to see them again and to be honest now I think if they did come back to Australia and do another tour I would just be straight out trying to get tickets to as many shows as I could and again just like we talked about with Eva how I get around is none of my business at that point in time at the announcement of a tour my only concern is getting tickets the logistics of that, that's a future problem. Don't worry about that. Just like this. It was like, how are we going to get there? Where are we going to stay? How are we going to get around? Who cares? Get the tickets. Let's get the tickets. Then let's get to California. Then let's figure it out. Even though California is, of course, massive. It doesn't matter. Let's figure, we can figure it out, right? Anyway, did not need to figure it out. Which was very um, disappointing. But in the climate, could not be helped. Oh, actually, I forgot to say this. Um, obviously, as I said, you don't really take photos or any footage or anything at the show at Rod Laver because, like, they do ask you not to. They're like, don't. And if they do, did see people filming stuff, like security did say to them, like, to not. But it was, like, it was just right at the end. And Maynard was like, this is, this is not verbatim, but it was along these lines. All right, you fuckers, I know you want to. You can take your cameras out now if you want to. And so people did. And I did, but I only took one photo. Just so I had like one photo of like the crowd looking towards the stage. And that's it. I just took the one. That was all That was all I needed. But um, yeah, it was just funny. It was like, all right, then fine. I know you fucking want to do it. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I remember he sweared at us. <laughs> Which I don't really care. I don't mind. Um, all right, so favorite songs obviously because this is tool part two i did say last time that the pot and anima are um are my favorites which is obviously still true they are my favorites but i also really love 46 and two and i love sober as well i just think it's such a good i think it's such a great display of their range both songs you know and i don't yeah i just i don't know I just think they're both great, very different from each other and different again from the other two. But, um, I mean, obviously, because they all release at different times. But anyway, that I also like those two. So, uh, a band I'd like to see or wish I'd seen. I'm going to do a little bit different this time and say it's actually an experience I'd like. I would very much like to see a band overseas. I'd like to see them. I'd like to either see an Australian band overseas and like see the reception, see what it's like, or I'd like to see, I'd like to see a band in their hometown. You know, like that's why, I, that's also one of the reasons I wanted to go to California and see tour because I just thought, how cool would that be? But I would very much like to see someone overseas. I was in the States in um, March, April and actually in the year before I was there in January and I was like you know what I knew a couple of bands who were touring and artists that were touring so I looked up where are they going to be what are they doing are they anywhere near me but that I realized too late actually in the planning of this trip that I was on is that I shouldn't be looking at just randomly hoping is blah blah touring is blah blah touring no 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 what I should do is look at the places that I want to go to then look at arenas entertainment centers concert halls all that type of stuff and see who's playing there at around the time i want to go because 
what I found out when I was looking, um, when I was trying to book some things in Minnesota, what I saw is that Chris Stapleton was in Minnesota and I was like, oh, I wonder when he's there. Well, when he was playing there was the night that I was leaving. I was leaving on a train that morning and he was playing that night. And then I also saw that Fallout Boy were also playing in Minnesota um, that, <laughs> that same night. Now, I technically, I guess I had enough time to rebook my train. I would have got, I would have had to pay a small fee to, I think, well, it's not small. I think it's about 25% to rebook my train ticket on another day. But, um, because of the way, but I'd set my dates really specifically, right? I'd set my dates so that when I got into Minnesota, I'd be able to see, um, two hockey games and I couldn't move that. I couldn't move the date going in because the date I got in was when the night was one of those games. And then the day that I was leaving Minnesota to go back to Chicago, I was going to see a Blackhawks game the next day. Now, if they were playing at night time, I probably could have changed my trip, my train trip back to the next day. But they were playing in the day. It was a Sunday, so they were playing at like, I don't know, one thirty two. I would have missed the game. And I had wanted to see the game. That was part of my reason for being in Chicago, so... I didn't get to do that. And that is the lesson learned about how to try to better manage my time. And I'm looking at places to go now. So the next trip I'm looking at is going to be in Houston next year. And I'm undecided yet whether I'm also going to go to Nashville or Raleigh. But what I am definitely going to do before I book anything in is look at arenas, anything around those two places to see what else is happening to help me maybe manage my time a little bit better and hopefully maybe see someone overseas how good would that be if you've seen someone overseas please let me know how it went let me know what the experience is like i'm very curious i'm curious about like crowd control i'm curious about like pricing because like our tickets to see tool in america were more expensive than here um like not just like a dollar exchange but like it was i reckon it was probably maybe $80 more Australian more um but any oh actually you know what I reckon it was way more than that it was considered I reckon it might have been 200 US to see him there and it was 200 Australian to see him here I reckon about that anyway so that's <laughs> that's quite a difference in the exchange rate anyway but if you're already there what difference does it make right you want to go you want to do the thing go do the thing anyway so that is on my to-do list is to see someone else overseas it doesn't have to be in america by the way just anywhere i'm traveling if there's a show to go to i, I want to go to the show thank you for joining me on band t-shirts with leah um i had a good time reminiscing about tool even though it seems like i i winched a little bit at the start you should know that um i didn't i would have never broken up with tool it was just a minor disagreement and actually you know i forgot to say this too when they announced when i saw the post about them announcing that they were re-releasing the deluxe album version and the other one they actually said they recognize that tool fans find music release something along something along those lines but they did say an immersive experience and i was like yes that is correct because i told anybody that would listen or even wouldn't listen i told them anyway that it is an immersive experience and I would like the full experience. So anyway, thank you for joining me. Uh, this is a band t-shirt. This is Leia and this is goodbye. Bye ya.